Today we are in an M4 GTS. It's my first time driving one of these. I've driven the M4 Competition, uh, regular M4 F8 series, but this one, the GTS, I have not experienced yet. Now off the rip, um, you're gonna notice right away that this one does not have a cage in the back. They're actually in the process of replacing the cage that came in this car, so that will be here soon. But um, yeah, I'm excited to try this thing out, man. Let's see what it's all about. Got the DCT transmission. 500 horsepower. Now obviously this car has the S55 power plant being that it is an M4. However, it is tuned with a GTS tune, I guess increased boost. And then of course, obviously the water injection system, which helps out a lot as well. From what people tell me, the weight difference is uh, noticeable in this. I'll let her warm up a little bit. This thing just has such a crazy street presence. I mean, it just looks like a straight up race car on the street. This is basically a race track car that is has license plates on it so very cool unique car i've obviously seen a bunch in person but i've never been able to actually drive one i can tell you already i am in m2 so it's pretty stiff but i like it it almost made me feel like when i first got into the gt3 rs the porsche it was just very stiff and race car that's how this feels this is a 2016 it has about 29,000 miles on it um, in the alpine white and i think it looks really good Wow, dude, this thing is tight. The suspension is incredibly tight. Brakes are nice too. I think I'm really gonna like this car. I knew I would like it, but I, I wasn't sure if I would like love it, love it. I think I might love this car. There's something about the way that um, it just feels so planted on the road. You don't need coffee when you have a car like this. It's just gonna wake you up on its own. But this is definitely one of those cars that you can just buy and it's gonna do everything right out of the gate. And I think that that's just so badass. Also love that this car has obviously the OEM OLED taillights that just look so good. I will say the aftermarket ones look pretty good too. It's very hard to tell the difference, but when you get up close to these real ones, the individualized discs and the way that that motion works, it's so smooth and cool looking. You can adjust the clamping just like most of these other cars right here by the shifter. There's a little button, it gives you three settings. Put it all the way up if you want it like the fastest and the most firm clamping. That's what I have it on right now. Now, obviously the GTS does not come in a manual transmission but that really wouldn't bother me so much being that I have two other older builds that are manual. Dude, this thing feels great. So I'm kind of getting that manual thirst quenched by my two other older cars. Um, I like the F30 in auto and I think that I would really dig this in auto too. Oh my God, dude, this thing is, this thing's good. This car feels really good. Once you turn the clamping power all the way up, the, the shifts are a lot faster and much more harsh. Oh my God, yeah, the shifts are good. The shifts are good. Oh, I love how firm everything is and tight the car is. Like there's so much feedback when you drive this car. It really is just like an exciting car to drive. Another interesting thing about the GTS is if you run out of distilled water, it just reverts back to the 444 horsepower tune. So it's almost like a flex tune that will adjust for that water injection just in the event that you know you don't have any like distilled water around you and you're out driving on a road trip or whatever. But we do right now have distilled water in here, so we are cruising at about 500 horsepower. Yeah, man. I like this. 
Yeah, this is a very, very cool car. I like this a lot. The DCT feels really good. I've always liked the DCT. I had the DCT and the E90 M3 and under load, man, it is so fast and it clamps so incredibly hard. It just, uh, it does a great job. Door cards look so cool. I love these door cards. But yeah, for the most part, I mean, you know, it looks like your average uh, CS trim, you know? The only difference, obviously, is that you got the GTS there. But other than that, it's just very stripped down. Now, like I said, typically these ones, they have a cage in the back, but this one, um, they are replacing the cage. So it should be here soon, but they do have that rear seat delete that comes from factory as well, which is pretty cool. So I just put it back to comfort mode just to see if it would like, relieve any of the stiffness it does a little bit but this thing is this thing is very very firm like you feel everything but you can definitely tell this car and its suspension it's just tuned for a track like it's basically a straight up race car with license plates so i wouldn't say that this would be for someone who's looking for the most comfortable ride but if you're looking for a fun weekend car track car this thing definitely kicks ass <laughs> it's cra crazy if you would have told me four years ago that when I started this whole journey that I get one of these, I would have said, you're crazy. You're out of your mind. Unbelievable. I don't even know. Wow. So yeah, as you guys saw in the beginning, I actually went to Alta Auto Group to drive this car for a review, but I had been looking at different S55 options a lot recently, and I was just trying to figure out like what platform I wanted to experience the S55 in. Now, as much as I do love the M2, you know, I have owned an M2. Obviously, it wasn't in the S55, but it was an N55. So a lot of that just kind of felt repetitive to me. And I'll be honest with you, I never really saw myself being an M4 guy until I drove this car. So when I was looking at different S55 options, I always told myself the only way that I would buy like an F80 or an F82 is that it had to be like a special spec, something that was individual, maybe CS, maybe GTS. But I never really expected to be able to find one of these that I could afford. It just never even crossed my radar. But sometimes things just work out and opportunities just sort of fall in your lap. And as you guys saw, I took this thing out for a review, didn't expect to like it, completely fell in love with it almost immediately when driving it. And I also just thought it was such a unique and cool spec that even if it wasn't a car that I owned for life, I think it would be a really special car to at least own for a little while and learn about and enjoy and just have the experience to say that I did it. But let's be completely real here. I mean, when I started this channel, I had a 328 F30. I never thought that this would be attainable, all due to the fact that I was making 328 videos. I mean, that's, that's really how this happened. I just kept making the videos that I enjoyed making, regardless of the criticism, and now we ended up here. So this truly is a testament to just doing the things that you love and staying on that path, regardless of what happens. Not all of it is perfect, not all of it is peak, you will have valleys, you will have a lot of shitty circumstances, but as long as you just continue on the path that you are the most passionate of, in the end, it will repay you in the right way. All right, so that is enough rambling about that. Let's take a look at my 2016 M4 GTS. So the biggest elephant in the room is the obvious there's no cage in the car. We think that the previous owner who traded this into the dealership, and no, we don't know this, but this is really the only reason that I can come up with. We think that the owner probably was a bigger guy. And with those GTS cages in the back, they actually limit the amount of reclining room with a lot of seats. So if you're a bigger guy, sometimes those cages aren't really the most ideal thing. We think that maybe he just took it out and sold it because he didn't want it. Something like that. Nonetheless, the car doesn't have a cage, but we already ordered a new cage for this car. So that was one of my things with buying a car it has to have the cage the cage in these cars is such an important aspect to it being the gts model so caesar at alta auto group was able to work that into the deal for me which i appreciate so much i should have that in a couple of weeks here before we go any further you guys yes i did buy this car at alta auto group huge shout out to those guys none of this would be possible without them as you guys see i do a lot of like review videos on different cars that they have and that's literally how i came across the opportunity of this car and they gave me an absolutely irrefusable deal on the car 
and that's how we are here today. So big shout out to those guys and I'm gonna have them linked down below if you're interested in checking out their inventory. So yeah, in general, these cars are super cool, man. This is obviously the Alpine White. There's only 300 of these in the country and only I think it was seven or 800 made in the world. So it's kind of cool just having like a rare individual unique spec like that. Now it does have the GTS front lip, obviously. These are like $6,000 lips. I'll probably end up taking that off and just preserving it for the day that I do get rid of the car because I don't want anything to happen to it. It's a very, very expensive lip for this car. Um, the wheels are obviously the GTS wheels for this car. They are a 19 inch up front and the 20 inch in the back. Don't love the wheels if I'm being entirely honest. I'm taking off these wheels and I'm putting on the wheels that I want to do on this car. Also, we are running the carbon ceramic brakes. Treated properly, these brakes should last you the lifetime of the car. If you end up like tracking the car, you can definitely reduce the lifespan of them. And no, they are not cheap to replace. They are extremely expensive, but having carbon ceramics are incredible. They stop crazy, crazy good. They leave zero brake dust and they look just absolutely sick. So this does come with the carbon ceramics. Looks really good. The front hood is obviously the GTS, the real one. GTS carbon fiber hood fits really good like it should. Got the carbon roof up top. Everything is super gutted in these cars. Like they are very track focused. So this is all exposed carbon fiber door cards. You have the comp seats here. You've got the Alcantara trim with the armrest delete. Um, the steering wheel, I'm probably gonna do a custom Aza Auto Wheel steering wheel. This thing has just seen better days. The Alcantara is just kind of worn out. Now this one actually has 29,000 miles on it, which is kind of high for a GTS. It may not seem like a lot of miles considering it's, you know, still an M4 and a 2016, but when it comes to special models, 29,000 is not low. So this would be uh, on the higher end of mileage for a special car like this. I'm going to be honest, I'm not buying this car to preserve miles. I'm not buying this car to be one of those guys who's just, just going to garage it and stare at it every night. I'm going to drive the shit out of this car because that's why I bought it. I didn't buy this car to just let it sit around and look at it. So I fully intend on driving this car. Again, that's gonna trigger some people, but I, I don't care. It's my money, it's my car. I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do exactly what I want. So the car does go in for tint uh, this week. I think I'm gonna do 20 all around and then I might even do like a 70% on the windshield and then I'm gonna do tear away. And then the car goes over to the detail shop. I'm doing the entire car in Aztec PPF. Whole thing will be PPF. Not a single inch will be left exposed on this car with a special car like this. I mean, the fact that I just wanna drive it, it makes sense to just go and do it all. So we'll go over to Parks Detailing and do all Aztec PPF on this car, do the full ceramic coating, get it right, make sure it gets a good uh, paint correction beforehand. Got the beautiful OLED tail lights, which <laughs> just look mental. These things look so crazy. I ordered the IND black M4 GTS badges. Um, I got the black roundels coming from American Panda. It's a really remarkable car. This wing is a little bit bigger. It's a factory GTS wing. It's just on aftermarket risers. So the aftermarket risers are a little bit higher. I think the factory one is probably like half of the size or something, but I'll be honest, dude, I fucking love it. <laughs> And I know that a lot of people are not gonna like that. Like I already posted some videos of this car online and everyone's like, oh, the wing's so gross, take it off. And I'm like, kinda like it. <laughs> it may look a little weird now, but like once I start doing the stuff that I wanna do to this car, I think it's gonna make a little more sense. It does look a little out of place now because the whole car is like stock. Other cool things, car has water injection, obviously, um, being that it's a GTS, it has the GTS tune. It has the full titanium exhaust system on the car, it comes like that from factory. The suspension is completely adjustable, so it does have like coilovers. The suspension is unbelievable in this car. I've never gotten into a car that was factory other than like the higher end Porsches, like the GT cars that felt the way that this car does. It feels so good just straight out of the box. And that was what completely sold me on this. You guys see on this channel how we like modify these cars and we do all this stuff to it. And we try to achieve better handling and better styling. And I just felt like this car in particular did that so well without having to do anything to it. So when you pick the modification that you do to it from this moment forward, you have to be really careful because you obviously don't want to like ruin the car. You don't want to make it worse. This car was already set up so good the way it was that you just have to be very, very specific about the parts that you're adding. So I do intend on adding like actual quality parts. Like we're doing some even churry stuff on this car. It's going to be very, very good. Um, the first performance thing, well, it's not really performance. It's more so going to be preventative is going to be the crank hub. I'm obviously going to hundred percent do the crank hub. You buy an S55, you should just do it. We are doing the max PSI uh, four pin one piece crank hub 
from Keys Motorsports. We're gonna be doing that at CES Motorsport probably next week, following week, something like that. But yeah, that one for me was non-negotiable, had to be done right away. So yeah, I just wanted to add in all that footage from the beginning, cause that was going to be the review video of this car. I didn't think I'd love it as much as I did, and I loved it so much that I decided to buy it. Go big or go home. And I just decided to send it on this one, and I think that it's the right one to send it on. I got an incredible deal on this car, and really no matter what, like I'm gonna make it out good even if I decide to sell this thing in six months or a year or two years, whatever. Um, so it kind of just made sense for me. And yeah, man, I'm um, really, really glad to be an owner of a 2016 M4 GTS. It's hands down the coolest car I've ever owned. It really doesn't even feel real. Like I opened the garage this morning and just looked at this thing and I was just blown away. I'm like, how this is just unbelievable. Like, <laughs> how did we end up here just from making silly YouTube videos on BMWs? But we did. And uh, yeah, it has really just been an incredible journey. And um, yeah, I'm just so thankful. You guys are probably wondering, where's the F30? Did the F30 go? What happened to the F30? Yeah, there's, there's no way that I could keep all of those cars. I don't have the space for all those cars. I did unfortunately have to depart ways with the F30 in order to bring this one home. I only had that car for six months, but honestly, dude, it was fun. It's a cool car, but I am much more of a handling car type person. I actually have like three weeks of videos, you guys, that are scheduled right now that have a bunch of F30 content. So it's still gonna look like I have the F30 for the next few weeks, but I did get rid of the F30. It still has all of the modifications on it. And if someone wants to buy it, it'll be for sale at Alta Auto Group. So I actually already got paid out for the car, but if you guys want to go ahead and buy the car or make offers on the car, you can do so at Alta Auto Group. I'll have it linked down below. If they have the specific car listing already done, I'll also link that down below. But if not, just um, just give them a call and you know tell them that you're interested in the white 340 that they have there. I left all of the modifications on exactly how it was, which is a ton of stuff. I do have a full modification list video coming out sometime next week. So make sure if you guys are interested to check out that video because it'll lead you through everything that I have on the car. But the car's flawless. Like, like, nothing's wrong with it. It's a fantastic version of what an F30 340 can be. But when you are presented sometimes with opportunities to level up, especially this nature and this special and unique, you gotta make sacrifices and you gotta take those opportunities if you can. And so for me, this was an easy one. It was pretty easy for me to walk away from the F30 to walk into this because I'm getting way more car than the F30. And so yeah, if you guys are interested in 340, go ahead and make an offer on it. But uh, we're getting into F82 content from here on out, boys and girls. S55, M4 GTS, dude, I am, um, I am so, so excited to own this car. I had been searching for a long time. I've been driving a lot of different cars, trying to find the right one that just like spoke to me. I would get into the cars and I would enjoy them and I would like them, but I just couldn't find one that was really like me through and through and drove just the way I wanted it to. Cause I like a car to just be a little bit more rowdy and a little more like racy. I have a Volkswagen Tiguan. If I wanted comfort, I just go drive my Tiguan. I wanted something that was a little bit gnarly. I knew that if I was gonna do something like an S55, I couldn't just do another F80. I couldn't just do another F82. I couldn't just do another M2. It had to be something special and this sort of just fell in my lap anyways guys thank you so much for watching the videos thank you so much for all of the support get ready for a gts build man it's gonna be wild love y'all see you in the next one peace